will fire our biggest gun. And to the item which we call the Londoner and the Hun. For the purpose of this item, which we think now should be done, I play the part of the Londoner. And I, most reluctantly, the Hun. You'll have noticed, said the Hun, what we've been and gone and done to the highways and the byways of your town. But it's nothing, said the Hun, to the fusillade of fun that the Führer has a mind to send you down. Aren't you staggered? Aren't you cowed? Aren't you praying out aloud? Aren't you dreading every setting of the sun? Aren't you weary of blaspheming at the bombs that come a-screaming? <sighs> Don't you wish that you was dreaming? Said the Hun. Shut your big blue pencil mouth, said the Londoner. There's a channel to the south, said the Londoner. But the bully who's your boss doesn't dare attempt to cross. So the nasty-minded cuss thinks he'll take it out of us. But he better think again, said the Londoner. We can stand a lot of pain, said the Londoner. We're not dumb Teutonic mutts. We've the guns and we've the guts. You can tell Adolf he's nuts, said the Londoner. You're forgetting, said the Hun, that your streets are overrun with the homeless and the hungry and the halt. Not to mention, said the Hun, that your buildings by the ton are succumbing to our aerial assault. And the palace of your king has a badly crippled wing. Crazy Cockney, the Blitzkrieg's but begun. It's your diet for duration. Why the stubborn hesitation? What about capitulation? Said the Hun. Why, you nasty Nazi knock, said the Londoner. How you miss the ruddy mark, said the Londoner. All the deeds of which you're proud are but stitches in your shroud. Every little child you slay is a crime for which you 